welcome to another video and today we are going to teach you well i say we because i have multiple personality apparently i'm going to teach you how to do a pbr validator check so we're going to create a tool in post process that allows you to check if the materials are within the pbr range based on the information you have or what you can manage to research online and i'm going to just show you what we set up and then we're going to try and explain it okay so we're going to use scene texture base color for lighting so you scroll down and you make sure you take the base color for lighting not scene color this time we're going to use breakout flow three components what's happening here is we're taking the screen of the image so whatever is happening there in terms with the light and then we are separating all of these datas in rgb into uh, three different values instead of four and also we are making sure it's being multiplied by uh, three different numbers these numbers are from scientific information so all of the numbers are researched and checked so to give you an idea they could they come from um, substance design a PBR guide such as 0 0.04 they come from physical based information the ranges they come from luminance how our eyes see uh, red green and blue and how much so these are not random stuff which is why I haven't posted a video for over a day or two. I don't know because uh, it took me time to, to figure this out. Okay, so basically we're multiplying it and then we're adding it together so it equals one. So whatever comes in should be one. So whatever the number is, it's multiplying by this number and this number and this number and it gets uh, whatever number it gets. And then we want to add it together. And then basically the goal here is that uh, 0 0.0.4 is the threshold. If it's over it, then it's going to be uh, 1. If it's below it, it's going to be 0. So essentially the goal is to make sure that we are being told that if it's wrong, then it's red. If it's correct, then it's black. So it's pretty straightforward. And then we are saturating it, which means clamping. And basically we're clamping it because whatever the number is here, we don't want it to be beyond 0 and 1. So within the remap value range, essentially what we're doing is we're checking that we don't have too dark uh, materials. And if it's dark, we want to see red. Okay. Same thing here. We're checking the, the brightness of materials. And we don't want it brighter than this number, also from the internet because um, we don't want pure white, right? Because nothing is pure white. So if it's uh, larger than that, we want to output uh, that is true. Um, and it's um, yellow. If not, it's it's going to be black. We're then multiplying it and we're then adding them together so we can combine the, the colors. Uh, we are then doing the same for the metallic. So for the metallic, we are doing the same. We are, again, getting the information from the screen. We're dividing by three. And the reason we're dividing by three is the same reason we are dividing here. So these are the scientific numbers are making sure that it never exceeds uh, one because we're also clamp clamping it anyway. And we're doing the same thing here because it becomes 1.6. We want to make sure it's divided by three. So it stays uh, average. So we want the average metalness before we go into this remap value range and we're doing 0 0.66 which is you know the percentage that i found on the on the documentation and then we want to see blue and we are combining it together multiplying it into the scene metallic and then we are having the lerp we are seeing the numbers we're masking things so we don't uh, uh, so we can mix them together and I'll show you it gets purple or something. Uh, it goes into emissive color. And then we are ignoring this guy. So it doesn't come into the calculation. And we are just using if and distance for this. Okay. So that's the general uh, setup for this. I will hold the screen a little bit if in case you want to pause and, and copy this. Now, how does this work? Good question. So you can see this is yellow. This is black. There's one black here and there's a red. Okay. So if we look at the materials I've set up here, you can see this one is 0 0.03. All right, so it's under the 0 0.0.4. So it's being detected and it's saying, hey, not correct, too dark, red, red, red. Same with the yellow, 
it's uh, pure one, so it's beyond the 0 0.94 or 96. Um, so it's telling us, hey, it's too bright. And it's actually the only one here, so that's good. And then you have the blue, which is basically metalness, and it's telling you if it's uh, metal or not, okay? So this is useful because as you can see, there is something odd happening. Because if you look at this, it has some blue to it. If you look at the carpet, it has blue and purple. And the purple is because the blue is mixing with the red, so you need to fix this. And the same thing happens here. You can see there's a mix of color. It's telling me that there is some issues, okay? So to illustrate the example a bit more, so you really understand the, 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 the value of PBR also, because there's a lot more here to learn in this video. All right, so we have the carpet. So let's have a look at the carpet. Let's uh, do back here and I'll do unlit first. Okay, so you can from experience tell that this is dark, this is dark, this is dark. With experience, you should be able to spot that without this, but it's just good for other people to know this and explain this. Um, and this is why it's important when you do your own pieces online and whatever you're doing when you make portfolio, not to trust the things that you download because don't expect that people who are doing the work actually understand this, especially when it comes to how it impacts lighting. So let's have a look at this carpet, double click it. So for example, if I were to check the wise metal, we will probably find it's connected to the metal here, M being the blue. Let's disconnect it and let's click apply. And let's have a look. And if we go back, you can see now it's just red. So we got rid of one problem, which is this shouldn't be metallic whatsoever. Um, the second thing is why is this red? Well, it's too dark. So if you go back in and we go into this, uh, don't do this in an actual development context. You actually want to change the material. I'm just showing, uh, proving a point. So I'm going to go all the way down to six because I kind of know that's the uh, the value because of the darkness and experience. So if we go down to this, you can see that it's becoming uh, black, which is good. Now, if we go back, you can see it's not as dark as this anymore. Okay, go back. Same problem here. You go in. You tell the artist in this case, and you tell them, hey, it's too dark, uh, it's going to have problem with lighting and whatnot, and PBR. You explain it to them, you fix it like this, you take a screenshot and then tell them to fix the material. Boom, problem solved, and you just keep going like that. So you have other problems where you have like, it's partially metal and not fully metal. Obviously, these are the things to discuss as well. Now. Don't use unlit view when you do this. I'm just doing it to make the video quicker and explain things. Now, the reason you want to use a uh, base color is it's uh, not the same. So if I turn off here and I do this, uh, obviously they've changed everything a little bit, but I'm going to show you from this side. And if I go to unlit, you see it seems as if it's brighter. Uh, the reason is for unlit view, you it, it includes emissive, first of all, which you might not want to do when you're evaluating things. And it also includes lighting. Uh, while the base color, um, it ignores metallic roughness and specular. So what happens is you see the true base color and you can then see that is in fact is darker than it should be. So you don't get influenced by any other layers that the artist must have done, okay? So you can see these are too dark. And then we know that because we just made uh, a process volume and we can now look at the problems. And the goal is to adjust them as much as possible uh, for your production, right? So you can correct this. Like this is, looks like a material and texture, but we fixed it because we were fixing this. So this one was corrected also. And you basically go around and you, you check the stuff. You can see the purple is gone here as well. So you can just uh, make it less dark here as well if you wanted to. So if you went to, uh, I don't know, what's it called? Door lock, I guess. You go here, you have a look. Uh, again, you don't do actually do this. Um, in the production context, I'm just showing that you can fix quite a bit. And then you take a screenshot and you show it. So uh, this is how you set up um, a PBR validator for your project. And um, hopefully that's useful. 
Uh, if you don't understand PBR and other things, again, if you really un want to deep dive up everything and all the nodes and everything, again, it takes me a lot of energy and time. You you have no idea how much time I spent just uh, learning the math for this and then um, figuring out why it's doing it and how it's working and all this. So um, if you do want to know the details, you, know, you can always uh, join the free courses and from there join the webinars and stuff like this. Uh, other than that, thank you for watching and I hope you can use this in your projects and your artwork and your portfolio. So when you download stuff from now on, please make sure that it is in fact set up correctly for your lighting. Okay, thanks for watching and see you again soon.